Making movies, making movies is how we do it. Vamanos. Good morning. You want to know the not so fun part about all this? Waking up in the dark when it's about 30 degrees and packing everything up. <coughs> And you're probably thinking, well, why don't you just sleep in and wait till the sun comes up and it's warmer? Well, the days are so short out here, we have to get started earlier. Otherwise, we won't get the miles in. But yeah, this is definitely uncomfortable to be cold and packing up sleeping bags and stuff. Well, that's pretty exciting. I might be cold, but that view is just spectacular. Hello, you two. How's it going? Good. Whew. Do you have any fun dreams last night? Yeah, but they're not suitable for camera. <laughs> <laughs> you Canadian dirty dogs. How about you, Mira? Oh, can I pet you? You warm my hands up. Oh, I don't see a stick. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? I don't see a stick. You are so sweet. Not a bad place to camp. Here, give me a hug. Give me a hug. Warm me up. I'm so cold. Oh, I love you so much. Yeah. Oh, Mira. So Mira has to be on a leash because of the... Uh, Permit, the land we're on, says all dogs must be on a leash, so she's tied up to John and drags him around. <laughs> Hi, or maybe I should say John is on a leash. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Woo! There's John getting ready. And there's Mira supervising. And there is the sun. Come on, warm us up. Okay, thank you. Flat ground right next to one of the best campsites ever. All right, here we go. Half frozen, starting the day. No flatties, no crashies, no whammies. Heading further south in Navajo country. It's amazing what a little sunshine and moving your body will do. We are warmed up now, feeling good, legs are feeling good, mind is feeling good. Today we're going to head toward a town called Cameron and uh, along the way the goal is to have a lot of fun. We've been riding for about an hour, mostly uphill. And we were both just admiring the fact that it's completely silent. No wind. And from what we can tell, we're the only ones out here except for a couple cows and a mirror. Hi, Mira. How are you today? You having a good one? Is that a smile? You smiling? <laughs> Oh, does that mean you want some more love? Oh, she's... 
Oh, oh yeah, you want some more love? Yeah, is that what you want? I got more love for you. Endless love for you, Mira. The whole world loves you. Okay, let's ride bikes. I know you want to keep you want to keep playing, but time to ride bikes. See you later. <laughs> Look what we found for you, Mira. Some water. Why are you drinking it, John? I'm not a big fan of chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my friends, it is now the moment of truth. Something I've wanted to do for a long time, but I just haven't. Can you guess? I'm gonna ride John's bike with Mira. Yeah, you wanna go on a ride with Uncle Doozer? You think I can do it? Are you gonna behave for me? <laughs> so John, uh, what are the tips? I don't know, ride your bike. <laughs> <laughs> Balance. Uh, what should I be looking out for? I don't want to hurt your doggy. Yeah, she's pretty good. She won't she won't run in front of you there, but um, yeah, just uh, be prepared for the shift of weight. She'll move around a little bit in the basket. And uh, yeah, it might, might surprise you. It might be uh, very foreign feeling. <laughs> Most of the stuff in our bike, you know, we, we lock it in place, we strap it down and it stays pretty stable. But um, yeah, she moves around. <laughs> so it can be wild. <laughs> All right, we'll do tradesies. All right, Mira. Oh, hi there, honey. Let's go for a little ride. <laughs> I'm okay. excited. This is quite the honor to be able to ride your bike. You're trusting me with your dog. Okay, here we go. She'll be easy on you. Luckily, we're about the same size, same size frame. John's on the old 600X. Right. You ready, Mira? Oh, God. Oh, it's a little wobbly. Here we go. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> wow, this is ex <laughs> this is definitely way heavier. But T Mira is already tucking her head right in. Look at that. She's so sweet. <laughs> She's leaning right up against me. Woo, here we go. We're going up a slight grade here. John wanted this to be the real deal. So I can feel what it's like to pedal with a 40 pound Mira. And so what does it feel like? Oh, feels great, you know. I see you doing this all the time, and it definitely makes me happy to be able to, to hug her while pedaling. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Huh, Mira? Yeah, but I definitely have a lot of respect for you, bud. Hammering this big old bike up these, these hills. <laughs> yeah, how we doing, Mira? How we doing, girl? Yeah? You good? <laughs> Yeah. That's my girl. That's my Mira. <laughs> oh, this is great. All right, here we go up the hill. Uh, this is why John has those beastly legs. <laughs> yeah, this is easy here on this side, I gotta <laughs> say. I'm just tootling along. <laughs> Haven't touched the gear shifter. You look so funny. You look funny on that bike. Yeah, it's kind of small, it's short. Woo! This is my chance to steal Vera. Bye, John. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Awesome. And just so you know, ladies and gentlemen, I only rode about maybe 400 meters. <laughs> Not far. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, Mira, for the honor. Thank you, John. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. yeah Did uh... I do a good job? Did I do a good job? You know what's interesting? Like, you know, obviously there's weight on your bike, but I mean, if you want to train for an ultra endurance event, <laughs> get yourself a dog, a setup like this, or just add a ton of weight to your bike. <laughs> That's good training. Yeah, man. Okay.
seat nap there. Could you look any cuter? I don't know. So John, here we are in the middle of nowhere. Last year you were on your bike for over a year. You've spent a lot of your life doing very difficult, tough adventures in the middle of nowhere. How do you how do you deal with loneliness, being alone? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. People do ask that. Um, first, I would say sort of it's important to know what we're talking about because lonely and being alone are not the same thing. People can be lonely in a crowd or you know a family get together or in a concert or you know any of those kind of things on the subway. Um, so they're, so they're different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do get get lonely. Um, sometimes I just eat a snack, <laughs> honestly. But you know, the world's changed a lot since when I was first traveling. You know, we could we'd have to send a mail or we'd get a little card and we could you know call to collect back to Canada from New Zealand or wherever we happen to be. But now you know I have a cell phone. Like if there's service, I can reach out and talk. I can see people and make those connections, um, even on Instagram. Those aren't sort of the, the personal one-on-one -on -one being able to touch another human being, to, to, you know, to smell them, to hear them, to you know, feel their presence, that's different. Um, that part's a bit more of a challenge. I mean, the people I meet that are, are fans of ours or followers, they're really warm and caring and generous and that part's been amazing already on this trip. It's happened several times. Um, but there's still a distance between us and, and them. It takes a while to get over that, and it, it does happen. Um, but yeah, the reality is, is uh, f you know, for me, uh, you know, there's there's not many women out here. It's tough. It, it's. Uh, oh, we just changed the subject to women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like having a life partner. People ask that, you know, like <clears throat> because when I'm, you know back in Canada or I'm you know in Mexico or wherever for a period of time you know you can you can start a relationship but you need to be together and I work I work away at when I'm back in Canada too so I'm, I travel quite a lot regardless but um, yeah it's tough I think the important thing is to be when the times are good and you feel good and you're around friends you know such as yourself and and others and, and Mira of course she helps soften that um, just to be appreciative and grateful of those times and hang on to that little kernel and it gets you past those times when it, it can be lonely. And then understand when it is time to be, you know, maybe hang out in a city for a little bit to kind of feed yourself. Because we're, you know, we're multifaceted human beings too, right? We're not just like riding machines in the desert with no water, you know. So, it, it, yeah, that's an important part of life to, to have those kind of relationships. But it's a challenge doing this kind of travel without a doubt. Um, yeah. You've done a lot of big stuff. Is there anything that scares you? What kind of moments scare you and how how do you get through it mm. yeah i mean i, I think it's preparation like when, when you're initially th thinking about a a, a a trip um i definitely turn on that that negative brain the what ifs and try and then um do things that i that are constructive that i can uh help prevent those or minimize or reduce some kind of mitigation measure and then, um, and it may be a, a go, no go kind of situation where I, I choose not to go into a place or I change a route. You know, if I'm going to go up into a, into a mountain range and it's, it's wet and I don't have the equipment, I'm going to get hypothermic, you know, and there's this poor mirror here, or if I'm on my own or with another, you know, colleague or climbing partner, then, um, yeah, you make the, make the smart choices. Um, but preparation can build that, it can be that confidence too, right? You can't just, you know, wing it off and go so I you know I have parts to repair the bike um, you see me do it and you see me do it to other people's bikes um, you know clothing for the you know and food and that kind of preparation those kind of things and then and then bit by bit you try you build on your confidence you know from past experience you can't just all of a sudden be confident um, and then know when to retreat <laughs> that's really important um, you know it's better to retreat and live and and come back and try again under different conditions than, than um, yeah, just be silly about it, you know, for the gram, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Right on, John. Thank you, man. Anyways. Mira's like, will you humans hurry up and get out of here? <laughs> your ear is so soft. Does your dad, like, groom your ears? Look at these ears. I love being out here with you guys.
so we've been very low on water all day nursing it just taking little sips because there's not a lot of water out here as you can see but we just found the holy grail of water look at this oh it's so nice to find water such a relief such a relief you know, it's a stress you know you know there's that i mean we're, pro we're not gonna die out here like it's pretty cool whatever but just the discomfort of being very very thirsty is painful look at that zap it zappy totally do you know what do you know what's happening in there <laughs> how, how is it making it safe to drink I think it's hitting it with UV light. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Science at this level is kind of like magic for the primitive here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, big industries and uh, towns use uh, UV to, to treat their water. So John and I are just sitting here eating burritos, having the time of our lives. Seriously, we're both talking about how these are the moments that we love about being outside and being on bike trips and being in the wild. And I was saying, I might never in my life be out here again. So you really have to enjoy it in the moment because this, this could be it, you know? And uh, it really helps you to put things into perspective and really enjoy where you're at and enjoy that burrito. How is it, bud? Hitting the spot. Hitting the spot. Yeah, that's perfect. And how's your, uh, looks like you're cuddled up next to a cow patty. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Goofball. Oh, and the temperature is perfect right now. We filled up our water bottles. We have food in our bellies. We have a view of canyons and bluffs and prairie land. This is the good stuff in life. This is it. It's amazing. You know, people talk minimalism is quite popular now, but I mean, like, <clears throat> except for that word, doesn't seem very minimalist. But I mean, yeah, some fresh water, a little bit of food, our bikes. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, so simple. So simple. You know, people talk a lot about how van life is about as simple as you can get. Uh, uh. Bike life is way more simple. Everything John needs for the next few years is on that bike. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> Hello. We've got some loud dogs. <laughs> but all they're doing is barking. There's some sheep over here. These are sheep herding dogs. And they really wanted to play with Mira. <laughs> What do you think of that, Mira? What do you think of that? She beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a good dog, Mira. Oh, trying to lick my camera? Check this out. Here we are riding along and our friends Craig and Nicolette and Michael show up. How you doing? Good to see you. How's it going, buddy? How you been doing since the last time we saw you? Oh, I got sick. Oh, that's right. You got yeah. sick. I'm sorry to hear that. Feeling a little better today, so. That's good. How you doing, Craig? I'm pretty good. How are you? Good, 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 man. Hey, Michael, is that your bike up here? 
Is that your bike in the truck? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You're ready to rock and roll with us, aren't you, buddy? Yeah. Get that helmet on. Let's go cruise. Look at us go. No crashies, no flatties, no whammies. <laughs> rum, rum. Nom, 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 nom. Make motorcycles have to ride in the dirt, I know. Yeah, we'll see you in Boulder, okay? Come visit. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us again. You guys are you guys are awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. That was so cool of them to come visit us, man. Oh yeah. And bring the bikes and got to hang out with Michael again. Yeah, they just make you feel welcome. Exactly. Yep. So now we're really close to the highway, the one we were on yesterday. We're gonna get back on that and zoom zoom about 15 <laughs> 15 miles to the town of Cameron and try to find some Navajo tacos. There it is, the Navajo taco. It's Navajo fry bread with refried beans and cheese and all sorts of other good stuff. So my favorite part about this Navajo taco, of course, are the frijoles, the beans, and it's on a nice soft fry bread, like a sopa pia. I'm loving it. Loving it. We could have used three or four of these out in the trail. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yum. Yeah. That's how you wash clothes in a hotel sink. Are my clothes a little dirty? I can't tell. Mira, you want to jump on the bed with me? Yeah, we got a hotel. We got a hotel. Yeah, you're so excited to have a hotel tonight. <laughs> we got a hotel and I'm so excited. See what I have to put up with? <laughs> this is what hotel life is like. Everybody's just lounging. We've got Mira, of course. Our bikes are hanging. Things are hanging off of the bikes to dry, we've washed our clothes in the sink. Drying rack right here. Hey there, look at that fluffy hair, it's not all greasy. And we are charging like crazy, all the devices and cameras and computers. John is over here watching Canadian soap operas. Yeah, it's all about uh, maple syrup and cutting wood. <laughs> <laughs> Lumberjacks in uh, flannel sweaters and stuff. That's right, totally. You know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and cheese curd. Yeah, it's uh, poutine time. Oh, yeah, poutine. <laughs> and I'm going to steal Mira. She's going to sleep with me tonight. Yeah, you are. Yes, you are. My favorite dog in the whole wide world. Yeah, you are. Good girl, Mira. Woo! So beautiful.